Hey there, this is Derek Murphy from creativeindie.com. Today I'm going to be talking about Midjourney for book cover design. Midjourney is an AI text prompt uh, illustration generator. So you can type in words and the robots will try to create art based on your prompt. So tools like this have been coming for a while, but Midjourney just went public. So all of a sudden, a lot of people are talking about it and how it can be used in certain areas. I'm associated with publishing, so a lot of my friends on Facebook or social media are talking about it for book cover design. And since I've been a book cover designer for nearly 20 years, um, I'm really excited about the things that you can do with it. But there are some copyright restrictions that it's important to be aware of. So I'm going to go through in this video the basics of how to use Midjourney for yourself, and then some of the risks that you need to be aware of. I did already post this to my blog. Um, so these are some of the quick images that I shared. I've gone through some of the things that you need to know and a little bit of you know how-to tutorial stuff, but it's a lot easier to see on video, which is why I'm also creating this. Um, these are the prompts I gave it for some of the books that I'm writing, my mermaid fantasy series, Greek mythology, and then I have like a prison fae dark horror fantasy. Um, and I really like these images that it came up with. It's also really good for character design and faces. Um, it gets a little wonky. It can't always handle character design and background and face at the same time. And a lot of the faces still look a little bit like an uncanny valley, but they're good enough as illustrations that they could work for book cover art. Um, it's also really great for very specific background sceneries. If you need a specific, you know, castle in the woods. And it does even really well for realistic stuff. If I want a photorealistic, this one was you know, burning helicopters. It's not very clear because this isn't a good picture, but we'll get back to that later. Um, this is like a 1970s crashed helicopter. And previously I would have had to try to make something like this, how to like Frankenstein a scene by blending all the little pieces together in Photoshop, but then you're still using stock photography to get all the pieces and it takes a lot of work. The advantage of Midjourney is that regular people with no skills at all can make high quality art. It does really well for very specific things. This is a little fairy village that I don't love, but I, I think it's cool that it looks like a real product, like something that somebody made out of moss and bark. Um, this was just something I made for writer's block. I made a whole bunch of these. And then some specific types of you know, tools. You can even say like um, an antique sword display and it'll show you a glass box in a museum. It does really good work for dresses, for like fantasy dresses. Um, I saw one that was like um, Mary Antoinette in a feather dress or something like that, a raven dress, and it does really great costume design, even putting her in the Palace of Versailles. And then sometimes I'll get something that's nearly good enough for a book cover art with like an illustrated fantasy style. Um, or for historic, if I want to do a Queen of Babylon, sometimes it'll do a good background scene, but get the face wrong. This is something I would fix pretty quick in Photoshop, but trying to find like the dress and the background in pieces, bits and pieces from Photoshop and then blending it all together, I couldn't create something that looks this good. And even something, it doesn't usually get positions right or bodies right, but I, it's also improving very quickly. So I think it'll figure that out. One of the downsides is if I wanted to like, you know, turn her face to the left or adjust the pose a little bit, I couldn't get that done in mid journey. Uh, but even so you can spin enough pieces that eventually you'll get something pretty great. And then if you know how to use Photoshop, you could clean it up. Here's, this isn't really showing right. It's a, it's a really big, um, picture, but I can get a bunch of costume design really easily for character design. It has a bunch of different illustration styles. If I wanted to do a, a steampunk urban fantasy or like a hand-drawn illustration or like a Raphael painting of, a, of an angel in armor. Um, and it does really good scenes. These pictures are blurry, so I'm going to not use those. Um, and then it does even like, this was like a hand-drawn um, 
tattoo geometric illustration or um, a picture from a scientific textbook about a sea monster. This was a, a vampire panda writing a Vespa. So it can really do anything and you can get closer to what you want by changing the prompts and the phrases. This is how it works. You have to sign up with Midjourney and then also get into Discord. Discord is sort of a chat app. So this is what it looks like inside of Discord. You can get Discord on your smartphone or on your computer and you will basically sign up. Um, in Discord, you'll have different channels over here if you sign up for many different things. I have some other chat groups. Um, it's meant for like private business chatting or something, uh, but Midjourney is basically open. So I would click on this Midjourney one and then I would see this. I could sign up and join a newbie room just to play around. And then when you get better, you can switch into one of these general threads and you'll be sharing this space with other people. So you'll see all of their artwork popping up also. So let me quickly touch on some of the copyright issues because I know this is already sort of controversial. Um, if you sign up for Midjourney with a free plan, then you cannot use them for commercial purposes. But if you upgrade and pay for the paid plan, which right now I'm paying, I think $30 for unlimited. Um, and there's differences in like how fast or how many or how much quality you can do. But as long as you're paying something, they basically say you have all of the rights, which means you can use the images you make for commercial purposes or a book cover design. So that's the main thing. It's not illegal to use these images for book cover design. However, there are two very large caveats. The first one is that even though you can use it yourself, you can't own the copyright. So I can't say this is my image. Nobody else can use it. Um, if somebody else wanted to copy it or use a similar image, then they could and I couldn't go after them or sue them. So this has been a big deal with book cover design previously because um, you want to make careful sure that you hired a professional who always sourced their art, which means they always paid for the stock photos and then they put everything together in Photoshop and then they have the rights to all of those pictures so that nobody could come after you and say, you know, you stole this little piece or you stole my idea. So it, it's a way to make sure you're protected if you hire um, a legitimate book cover designer and also that you own the rights that nobody else could copy your book cover exactly and use the same art because you had bought it legitimately from a book cover designer who was using legitimate sources. So because um, the AI software is trained from all the millions of images on the internet, um, you can't really own what it comes up with. Even though I can use it commercially, I don't have ownership of it. So some people think that's a really big deal. For me personally, um, it, it gets questionable. Like I wouldn't really feel comfortable selling book covers that were made in AI art, but that's really a, a, a thing about capitalism. Um, if I wanted to offer them and people wanted to buy them, as long as I disclosed where it comes from and what the risks are and everybody understood, um, then it's fine. It's just how much people are willing to pay for the art that I created. The other big thing, however, is that people are saying we can't see what the robots are doing behind the scenes. So there's no way to know for sure where it's pulling its inspiration from and whether or not the images it makes are too close for comfort and whether somebody else could go after you in the future. Uh, so that's a theoretical concern. As a practical matter, the way that Midjourney works is it always uses all of the pictures to get a sense and create something new. It doesn't copy one specific picture. So within their design, they're already making sure that they're not copying something already. I know you kind of have to trust that they're doing a good job of it because we can't see, and even the, the creators can't really see what the robots are doing. So that's a little bit of a gray issue, um, but I don't think it's a risk that people are making it out to be. The other argument is that people are using Midjourney to copy real things. So for example, this one is Grookey in the style of Joseph Sima. So this is a real artist and this is a real, I think like a, a character. So it doesn't own the copyright for either one of these things. And if this is recognizable, like pretend this is Hello Kitty or Mickey Mouse or something, Mickey Mouse is now 
Creative Commons because the copyright expired, I believe, although maybe they um, renewed it. But there's a lot of things like if I wanted to do a Baby Yoda, um, and even I think Baby Yoda is being sued because the people who made the Ewoks, um, no, not the Ewoks, the Gremlins, the opposite of Gremlins, the, the good ones, um, the people who made Baby Yoda or the people who made the Gremlins are saying Baby Yoda is a copy of their design. Um, so anyway, it's a, it's a big thing. It's, it's complicated. Um, it is true that you can put in a prompt for something else that's specific in, in the style of a certain person. If this is copyright free, if this is an older painter, um, then it might be fine. And even if it isn't, like you get a style, but it's not the copy of a painting and you can't really copyright a style. I really like to see what other people are making. Um, and this is a public forum. So for example, if I liked this one, this one has a specific picture because they have respun it. Um, so these buttons, this is one, two, three, four. And this is just a very quick little prompt. This is kind of how you want to start with just um, what you want. Full body will give you more of an image and then some details. You want to start off with you know, the thing that you want, the main thing that you want, then maybe the scene or the details, and then the style. And then once you get some ideas, you can rinse, respin all of them, or I can click one, two, three, four, and upgrade them to a higher resolution. Um, sometimes I like the low resolution mock-up and the higher resolution doesn't actually look as good. Um, or I can say, this one is the closest, this one is cool. I wanna see more like this one and then I'll respin it with these V buttons. Um, it's kind of weird though, because if you do get something that's that's pretty great already, um, when it tries to respin the details, it'll kind of start to slur or blur the design. So especially if you have like a specific position or posture um, of a character design and you keep respinning it, the, the, the parts will drift until it's weird and doesn't really look as good. Uh, here's another one that's a delicate painting of an ethereal, illuminated, beautiful girl submerged with nature detailed. That looks pretty good. It does pretty well for logos or like specific products. It does great for backgrounds. Um, so here we get into a little bit of the, the more complicated stuff. This is an 8K resolution. This is the AR. It's the um, kind of the screen resolution or the ratio. Is it wide or tall. And then this is sort of a newer one, which is quality 2.5. I believe that means um, it's going to make faster versions of lower quality, so you don't have to wait as long. So here is Luchi from Disenchantment, which I believe is you know a character, which is probably copyrighted in the style of another artist. Um, and so yeah, it gets weird if this is recognizable as a real character. Um, you just want to make sure if you're building your own art in um, in this tool in Midjourney that you're not using those specific phrases from copyrighted material. That's kind of on you. Um, however, it's also true if somebody uploaded these pictures and I didn't know where it came from and the prompt was copyrighted, um, then you know, am I held liable? If I bought it from a cover designer, are they liable? If I bought it from a stock photo site, um, it does get really murky and confusing, which is why people are uh, discussing it. It does a cool one in, um, in movie poster style. You can do like a 1970s movie poster style. Because I'm in this channel right now, what I'm going to see is a lot of other people's work. So I probably will see them go through like 100 different versions of the same art. Um, getting better and better. It often takes a long time to get the art where you want it um, by playing around a lot and retrying new prompts. So even if you know someone's trying to sell an AI generated image, um, it probably took them many hours of work to get there. This one I, I like is a uplight that tag or that prompt seems to work pretty well. So here's a blonde guitarist, tight outfit, combat boots, gloves. Symmetrical composition, symmetrical works really well as another prompt or keyword. Um, ultra detailed octane render. These are a lot of the ones that I use also. And then the AR916 um, is a taller version. These are the two that I use the most often, AR916 or AR916. 
16.9 just for height or width, depending. Um, although if I'm just playing around, I might not put any, and then it'll give you the default square image. Um, it may get tricky later if you find a perfect one and then you want to change the resolution or the, the ratio. Um, that may get a little tricky, but I could also, like for a lot of these, I could put it in Photoshop and just add space to the top and bottom if I wanted to. Here's another with that same exact prompt as I showed you before, only this one, personally, I like it a lot better and it's got a realistic face. Um, it usually doesn't get all of the details right and the face exactly right, but it's also improving really quickly. I tried this a few weeks ago and my faces were kind of um, nightmarish, like awful, but maybe because I kept re-spinning and they were just deteriorating. Um, but I believe the faces will be photorealistic in another few weeks. It's getting better really fast. Um, here's a vintage name tag. You can do badges or stickers or like Girl Scout patches, realistic type stuff. I'm actually going to check out one of these other channels just to see what other people are working on for some other examples. Um, so here's a cool one, Japanese high school girl with rifle, battle in town, Tokyo manga, cyber, full body, cinematic, super realistic. Um, this one actually turned out pretty well. I thought they were going to say something specific, like a not a brand, but like a company. Um, you can say like Disney animation style, and it'll give you a style, which is not really copyrighted, but it looks like a Disney character, um, which might be a little risky. I was trying to find some that look like a photograph because it does pretty good for photographic things. This one is hyper detailed wide angle. Wide angle looks works pretty well to make like a something that looks more like a photograph. So that's another one that I would probably save. Um, I'd probably copy and paste these into a text file to get sort of prompts that I like. So here's where it gets a little messy. Somebody else in this public channel made something that looks pretty good that could work for one of my mermaid things. If I wanted to use this element in a book cover design, I could make variations and or even just upscale to max and then keep this because this person who builds it doesn't really own the copyright. Um, I probably won't do that, but people can do that. I believe if you upgrade um, to a paid account, because it's also possible that like they are using a free version of the tool and they can't use it commercially, but because I have a professional version, I could use it commercially. Um, so it gets a little bit weird. But you could like start with someone's prompt, or I could just copy this prompt um, and you know keep trying to do it myself and get something similar. I also think in the professional version, if I wanted to, I could create a unique private channel so that nobody else could see my artwork, but I haven't really played around with that yet. Here's a very cool one that's just face of death realism. Um, so sometimes you can get very cool stuff with less specific prompts. It may not be exactly what you wanted, but it can turn out very cool. Um, so sometimes try like less is more. So just to show you how to use it, maybe I'll take this one. I'm actually working on something that's sort of like a um, urban fantasy, dark romance with um, Hades or the Grim Reaper. So down here, when you want to put in your prompt, you have to first type backslash imagine. And if I only type backslash, it'll show me this prompt so I could just click on it. Now I have this prompt box, so I'm good to go. And then I can say face of death realism. I can just copy that prompt. Um, but I'm actually going to say in some face of death realism. Um, so for example, if I wanted to do a character concept, I'll try both of these. Show you kind of the different variations. So I can say character concept or character design. Sometimes that works pretty well. Um, realism, face of death. That might actually be too much or too specific. Um, actually, maybe I'll take this one out. I'm just going to do handsome face of death for this one. It doesn't really do very well for bodies and also faces. This face looks pretty great. Um, so I may have to build something that's a body and then build something that's a face. But I'll try in this simple prompt. I don't know if handsome is going to is gonna work because I do kind of like this style. 
but I'll try that. So now it's thinking and I will see my prompt start to generate, but it quickly gets lost in all of the other people who are also generating art. And it can be really tricky to scroll back and keep trying to find um, your own version. There is a trick to that, uh, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and this is going kind of slowly. I probably should have used, used that 0.25 prompt to get faster images. I'm going to go ahead and just keep going on the next one. So this time I'm going to do character design concept death. Um, maybe I'll say Grim Reaper also, and I'll say realistic. Again, see, so I got these, but um, these are similar to those other ones the other guy had, but he's not very handsome, so that didn't really work the way that I had wanted. I'm going to do this down here. It probably will give me something. Oh, I'm also going to put in um, full body view. If I put full body view um, or like perspective, or maybe I'll say like wide angle or different things. And I'll try this one by just hitting return. So this didn't really work for handsome. Um, just for fun, this isn't something I would actually do, but let's try imagine Brad Pitt. Actually, uh, I was going to think of somebody else, but it's fine. Brad Pitt, Handsome Face of Death, Realism. Let's see how that one goes. I can check out the other one that I made. This is my character concept, Death Grim Reaper. It's still building, so it's a little bit slow. You know, a minute or two is still pretty good. Uh, and this is interesting. I'll show you in a minute. So this one finished, but see these um, white panels down at the bottom of the image? This looks like um, like a Shutterstock copyright to me. So it's a stock photo site. And see these like lines here? That's from a copyrighted image. So obviously that's not great. And I can understand the concerns. Um, I can't see the numbers, so I can't look this up. I could put this in a reverse image search tool and see if it brings me back to that original sample. Um, but yeah, this is concerning that it's using pictures. So I would really want to find the concept of this number. Um, I would you know, re reverse image it and see if it comes up, which it probably won't. Um, look on sh Shutterstock for illustrations of the Grim Reaper or illustrations of, of death and see if anything like this comes up. Um, my guess is it's already transformed enough that it's not going to be recognizable. And also, these are just really fast concepts. So if I want to upgrade one of these, I think it would probably um, make something even more different. So none of these are really great, although I do like the posture and the, the cloak of this guy down here. So this is version 3. I'm going to see what that looks like upscaled, and I'm also going to spin more versions of version 3. Here is my Brad Pitt handsome face of death. Um, that, you know, didn't really work at all. It just looks like Brad Pitt, basically. But that might be why I, I think Brad Pitt actually did a movie where he was actually death. So maybe they're just taking his face. Um, but I wouldn't use specific people. I wouldn't use specific characters or design prompts when I'm trying to build things. So this is the version that I respawn that looks like it's taken from a Shutterstock image. Um, I don't really love any of these, although this one down here is sort of interesting because it looks like he's holding um, a weapon. But this guy turned out pretty well. I really like how all of this looks, um, and I need something pretty specific like this. Um, my guess is there's so much detail and debris in the cloak and everything um, that it's not at all like whatever that original image looked like. I am going to go to Shutterstock, which I believe this looks like a Shutterstock, um, and dig around just to see if I can find it. I'll also reverse image search it um, just to make sure. 
Uh, the good news is actually, like if it was just pulling images from the internet and I don't know where it's coming from, maybe it's copying from an artist and I don't want to do that. If the idea or the inspiration or the basis is coming from a Shutterstock image, and usually that just means like the vague position, maybe the colors, maybe the gray background a little bit. Um, but that means that like this image is available on a stock photography site. That actually makes me feel a little bit better because even though I should definitely buy that image if I can find it, um, I know that it's out there for sale. So no one's going to question that I'm stealing from um, some artist. Um, but I do really need this little character guy. I'll show you why in a minute because I, I need him for um, a book cover concept that I'm working on. So I'm going to do one more example with some of the other keywords that I often use. Uh, for a book cover, generally you would want a taller image. At the same time, um, if you use a horizontal image like this one, I get the full bodied character in the image. And if I use a tall image, I might get a close up of the character, but I may not get the full body, which is kind of what I, what I want. So I'm going to go down here again and type imagine I'll use the same prompt, but then I'm going to copy and paste a lot of the, the keywords that I have. I do have this already over on my blog. This is kind of a, a prompt that I often use. I, I often use. Um, so I would copy this part and put it here as the noun. Maybe I'm not doing this very well, but noun standing in a scene. So if I wanted to add specific background, maybe I'll just say spooky forest with gravestones and candles. Maybe I'll say dark night. So first you want to kind of give a sense of, of the thing. Um, then you can start adding keywords. I'd use full body portrait, dramatic lighting, a lot of, a lot of these. Um, I added wide angle because I think that's a cool one. And up light. And I'm going to use this same thing down here. Um, so this is, you can either use a lot of these keywords for the style and the lighting, or you can try to use a lot of keywords for what's actually in the scene. So let's try this one first. I'll do another one. And this time I'll copy something else I used recently. So this is what I was trying to make. This is like a description of the thing. Um, and here I'm a little more, you know, I'm just writing a description of the scene that I want to see. So it's a young woman in the embrace of death. I'm trying to get like a paranormal romance where the vulnerable girl is being carried away or hugged um, in an embrace by a skeletal grim reaper, something I'd have to build in Photoshop. It's going to be very difficult to get all of this stuff together. Like I added um, a, a scythe, uh, black robes, a golden crown, I think, smoke and ash standing in reflective water, a lake. I, I tried this one a lot and I didn't really get exactly what I wanted yet. Uh, but I'll show you what it might look like anyway. So here's the first one that I made, which is basically just character design, Death from Reaper, standing in spooky forest with gravestones and candles. So I basically got what I was after, um, although it put in too many gravestones, it doesn't really look realistic. This one sort of looks like, like I like the colors. This could be a realistic scene. This one has the grass, which looks great. Um, so either of these as like a background might be nice, but then I'd have to take out the Grim Reaper actually. So it might be better to do it again with no character and just try to make the background. I also like this kind of misty, moody feeling. Um, so I could respin all of those, or I could upspin, um, upscale number one and number two, which I guess I'll do. Although, like I mentioned, I, I probably won't be able to use this background um, because of that character, unless I just completely cover over him, which I could do. And here's the other one I made that I tried to get a very specific scene in a book cover shape. Um, and some of these are sort of cool, but none of them are very realistic. This one down here, like at least the postures 
sort of look kind of right. Um, so I'm going to upscale that one to see what it looks like and see more versions of that one. This is the other one I'm just re-spinning. So it's just kind of doing the same prompt and trying again to see if I get any different variations. Um, all right, so that's sort of how the tool works. You can go to creativeinity.com where I have my blog posts if you want to copy and paste um, my favorite prompts or keywords, but you'll learn pretty quickly just by looking around in mid-journey and seeing what other people um, are using. Here's my new version of that same prompt where I tried to re-spin it. So you can see it changes all the details, um, but it loses some of the definition. This actually might, parts of it might work. I sort of like that this hand is right here that I might have to replace the hand. I definitely like all of the texture in this robe coming out to the sides. Um, so I'm also gonna upgrade that one, uh, version four. If I wanna see all of my art or if I don't wanna scroll back through everybody else's art, I can go over to midjourney.com, which is where I'll find my main portfolio. So this is what midjourney.com looks like. Um, I wish I'd use creativity or, or a professional name, but I haven't figured out how to change that yet. I kind of just set this up to play with. You can see some cool things in midjourney.com. I think you can see, this is my home. Um, but under tools, I can see a map of keywords that other people are using and how many times they've been used. Um, this one, I guess I could up, I could share my own pictures and other people could vote for them. That's my archive. This is um, keywords, I think, just general random keywords. Uh, and this is specific art styles, if I wanted, that other people are using. Uh, but anyway, so when you go to midjourney.com app and you're signed in, you're going to see your own stuff. And you can choose all or only the ones that you have upscaled. So this is the stuff that I've been making uh, recently. And so these are the ones that I just made that like maybe the cloak and the dress um, would work really well for detail work. Although like some of these other postures are a little bit better. I used the same prompts yesterday um, a lot trying to get this kind of image. So I did come up with some pretty interesting stuff. If I want to go back to Discord, I can click this down here and go to open in Discord. And that way I could continue to upscale or retweak um, any of these that I want to keep working on. Um, some of these are pretty nice. I was trying to make something basically like this one. So, you know, a young girl in the grip of death. This is like the postures of this one are about right or the size. I wanted death to be a lot taller or really behind the girl. So I jumped over to Google to kind of show you what I mean. This is sort of what I'm trying to make, like this layout would be perfect, but I haven't been able to get, um, I haven't been able to get Mid Journey to make something this specific with this kind of layout where the Grim Reaper is behind the girl. I even took this exact picture because you can start with an image prompt. Uh, maybe I'll show you that in a minute, but even using an exact picture, it won't come up with anything that looks even at all like this. It basically just gets like a general sense of the style of the illustration, but not specific to the posture or the pose. Um, this is another one that was great, like for like not this art, but just this kind of pose for a dark fantasy romance. Um, but I could take something like this just as the style, like I kind of want it in this style. So I found a picture that I like of the Grim Reaper. Um, I had to find a picture where you can um, right click, open it as a new tab and get a link to the actual JPEG. So just to show what this looks like, I can say, imagine I can use a prompt. I think you usually have to do www and then it has to end with a JPEG or like the picture. And then this should work. 
as a prompt. And then I could also do the same thing. Start with the prompt or end with the, the picture. Um, but then also add in all of the regular keywords that I want it to try to do. So it's basically just saying I want it to look something like this picture. So that first picture didn't really work at all. I'm going to try again with this one, even though this is a really low resolution. And obviously this one is um, copyrighted. It's got her name right here. So I can't use anything that looks like this or has the same exact position. Um, but if I generally get the concept of a young girl in front of the, the angel of death, as long as it's totally different, that'd be fine. I'd want to stay away from like checkered tile floors or arcs in the background or anything that would be too specific. Um, but even using this exact link doesn't give me anything that looks like this. That was kind of my point. Um, so going back to the work, I did a couple prompts. This one I just linked to that image I just showed you. So you can see it sort of vaguely gets the idea, but but not really very well at all. Um, and then and this one, I added some prompts. So in this one, I said, um, Grim Reaper, fantasy romance, young girl, young woman kissing. So this plus that image that I just showed you, and it gave me some things that I kind of like. This is not terrible. It's not the style I'm going for, but, um, but so you can use images to get a style, to help with the style prompt. Um, and none of this is even close to whatever image you put in. This one failed completely. It just didn't, you know, use the right image or the link didn't work, I think. Um, but when I tried to use that image with uh, some prompts, I got some of this, which also isn't great. I'm going to go through and show you some of the stuff I have, because now I've collected enough pieces that I could put something together in Photoshop that looks pretty great. And the advantage is, if you just buy a bunch of stock photos, like if I found a picture of the Grim Reaper and put him with a girl that I found with a stock photo site, somebody else could use the same pictures to recreate the same thing. It would just take a lot of work. So this is sort of what I'm going for, something very dark and moody and depressing, but with the angel and the girl embracing or kissing. So something sort of like this, this might be a good background. I could add some little castles or something in here. I have a lot of pictures of death. The The original prompt was just death standing by the water with castles in the background, but none of them came out quite like I want. I do like some of these quite a bit, so I'm going to open that one up and keep playing with it. I had some nice gothic dresses here, but they actually put her underwater, which doesn't work. Um, and then I have these. These ones came out really, really well, except that it looks like two women kissing, which is fine. It's excellent for like a gothic horror lesbian romance. Um, and I love the detail in these pictures. And I've already got enough for like a whole series, although the, the shape is wrong. So I'd have to, you know, find a way to increase the size or extend the dresses so that I can get a full picture. I basically like want this, but with a much taller guy kissing a much smaller um, girl. And these all look like two women kissing. I, got, I also got some pretty good textures like this guy, um, you know, as textures, if I upscale this and if I put like a woman in his arms, that could kind of work. Um, and then this one is, is pretty good. It's not quite perfect, but I like a lot of the texture that's going on um, here. And, you know, obviously, like, the first thing I'd probably do is turn her into, like, a real girl with a real face, and then he would have a skeleton mask or a skeleton face. I had some dark gothic backgrounds. Um, this stuff, like, I tried putting in the search term book cover, so then it gave me all this stuff, which looks like a poster or book cover. Um, and some of these forms almost work. It doesn't really do well with faces kissing because it's got to like it's got to create an image with just the right angles and then it's got to create two different faces in the right angles um so it gets kind of tricky i had some neat like very gothic dark fantasy steampunk stuff but that's not 
the right style. Um, and then this one is the one I think maybe I upgraded, but this sort of style where like she, if I fix her face and then I added the Grim Reaper up here with a big scythe and I added in all, all that other texture and beautiful like embroidery and skeleton stuff, um, but getting like just the right position and posture plus everything else, that's tricky for mid journey, at least right now. It might accidentally get there eventually. Um, and you know, if if I really wanted to do this for real for somebody or for one of my book cover designs, I would probably do it in Photoshop to just get what I want. Uh, however, most people don't have access to Photoshop to get whatever they want. So, you know, they, they can't quite do that. I haven't really talked about typography either. Typography is is like half a book cover design and it's important. So just because you can make cool images, um, it doesn't necessarily mean you can get a great cover. I do have a lot of resources for um, book cover design templates or typography and stuff. So you can learn to do it yourself or use my templates. Um, but I'll make another video. This is sort of just a video getting started using Midjourney. I'll make another video where I turn this art into book covers by putting it all together. Uh, real quick, I'll go on some of the other stuff that I designed more recently. So here I was trying to have a hero facing off with a dragon. It doesn't really do well with proportions. So, you know, putting the small hero in the foreground and then putting the giant massive dragon behind him in the background. If you played around with the prompts and the positioning enough, you might finally get there. Like this one almost had a protagonist or the hero. Um, but it doesn't do well with arrangements of elements. Some of my Grim Reaper fantasy concept stuff started getting really illustrated. So it's not really stuff I can use, but it's also really interesting. Like this one could almost be a really cool book cover design, even though it's a totally different style um, than what I was going after. Or maybe just for, you know, an eye-catching image for fun or, or your blog or something. Um, and then this one was really interesting. So some of these are cool, but not quite what I wanted. Although like this one's an illustrated style and I would want it sort of a realistic style. You can see I played around with this prompt for a very long time. Um, and I did get some very creative stuff. Like they put the skull up here in the castle. I think that's a clever idea, um, but I'd have to redo it to make it realistic. Some of these are sort of realistic, but um, but not fantasy enough. Anyway, so I've got this article on Creative Indie, where if you go to Creative Indie, you'll see, or you can just search Creative Indie Mid Journey um, if you want to copy my prompts to try to get started a little bit faster. But you really can just do this by yourself and play around with it. It is crazy fun. Um, on this page, there's also all the details about copyright so that you can understand things. Things are changing very quickly, so it doesn't mean that the way it is right now, um, it's going to keep being that way. But you should kind of be aware of it because people are talking about this. Um, I, it crashed several times yesterday because um, now that it's open for the public, everyone's starting to discover how amazing it is. Uh, it really is a complete revolution uh, in creative art and production in a way that's never existed before. Uh, I don't doubt that the servers are going to crash, that a billion people are going to be using this tool, um, that you know, stock photo sites are going to be absolutely flooded with, with amazing art and images um, in a way that like you could never really have happened before. So it's an exciting time. You should be aware of it also to protect yourself if you are buying pre-made covers or art just to kind of get a feel for what could be out there and what liabilities um, might be involved. But you can read those details on my blog. And like I mentioned, for me, this is sort of like half the step. Um, I got a lot of great pictures. I, I'm not using these right now for like actual um, book covers that I already have, but it does really well for like concept art and um, like I was really jealous when I was making book covers because I wanted these really high detailed fantasy character concepts 
And you can't just find pictures of people wearing this kind of armor because it doesn't exist. Um, so, and to like make something like this, to put all the texture and the detail would take a lot of time and work and you have to find the source. Um, so now I could create covers that I didn't used to be able to create with really amazing texture, armor, fabric details, um, like in a way that blows everything else out of the water. Um, so I'm excited about that. It also means, of course, that everybody else can also do that. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to try to use some of these pictures that I that I have found and turn them into actual cool book covers with typography and text um, in Photoshop. So I'll make another video showing how to use that. I have a lot of other videos on YouTube about how to use Photoshop and how to make book covers. Um, but I'll make a new one using these pictures and AI generated art, uh, just so you can see how it all comes together in practice. Thanks a lot. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Bye-bye.